there's so much I feel for us to talk about. I'd love to learn more about your history as a musician. Um, when did you get into like your earliest influences? Uh, my very first influences were, uh, of course, as a child when I've um, I got a uh, Deep Purple Burn album at Christmas, and uh, I couldn't deal with it because I was ten years old, and this was for far too hard for me uh, for me in that time. But uh, one or two years later, uh, I got the record in my uh, hands and listened to it. And uh, it was marvelous. It was great. It was to up to this time one of my favorite discs. So this was the the uh, main influence since I was about fourteen or fifteen. And wow! Then I get wow. used get used to uh, rock and roll and everything. Uh, just from the basic uh, with uh, Chuck Berry and the Beatles and all the stuff, the Stones, of course. And uh, then I joined a band uh, far before I could play. Uh, this <laughs> was with my with my uh, brothers and uh, guys from the neighborhood, and uh, this uh, was called Tram. This was the very first band. Uh, I was twelve, and this uh, the band name was formed from the uh, from the names of the members. Uh, T for Thomas, R for Reinhardt, A for Andre, and M for Matthias. So this was a tram, but it was completely crap. You will know no way to hear anything of for that time because <laughs> it was really, really, really bad. Uh, of course, we were 12. And then I joined a band at 15. This was called the Blackjack Company. And uh, with this band, I stayed up into uh, 1991, we did several uh, singles, had some uh, appearances on uh, sample albums, um, uh, samplers and stuff. Uh, and it was not that big, but it was locally rather good. <laughs> so the uh, we, this was my... Uh, first steps into the rock and roll business wow so uh so what made you want to pursue speed metal um this is a story i uh, i've told two or three or two hundred times <laughs> it was with this band like i told you the um the blackjack company um we thought that we are good enough to uh, get a record deal and uh, I was 22 and we uh, collected some money and produced the single. Uh, and uh, with the single, uh, we went to the uh, record companies. There were quite a lot in those times in Germany. And uh, we played the discs to them and they said, oh yeah, nice, but uh, Bon Jovi is, is already working. So haven't you got something harder and uh, it was okay with the first meeting but the second the third and the 20th meeting was the same so uh, we were coming back rather frustrated and a friend of mine who joined uh, Vivian were playing members of Gravedigger within that band and uh, I told him just play as fast as you can the drummer that was the drum of Alf Monat. And he played as fast as I can. And I played old Blackjack Co tunes to that. And it worked pretty well. And so uh, I thought of new lyrics for that. And it uh, came out uh, into the Bloodsucker Demo in 1986. And uh, what song was that? Pardon? What song was that? Where you changed that the lyrics? That was, of course, uh, Bloodsucker. Then ah. it was uh, The Wanker and uh, uh, Hot Blood and I think Disappointed. All of them appeared on the first uh, album. 
Wow. And this was the only the, the four songs, and we uh, we didn't have a, a, a guitar player or something. It was all done by myself and the drummer. But we produced that stuff and uh, sent it to some le- uh, uh, some record companies. And Gamma Records uh, answered just the other day and said, uh, welcome, you got a, a record deal. You're going to be uh, rock stars by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, we believed them. I was uh, 22, 23 and uh, as you see, we did become rock stars, but we made this this album, and this was the start of SDI. Yeah. Was, so, by the way, uh, the the band was not named SDI in those times uh, uh, because we were young and we wanted to be the hardest and the toughest and the loudest and the meanest and everything. So it was called Satan's Defloration. You see. Uh, Satan, as the most evil of all time, is raped. So <laughs> this was uh, our goal. And uh, of course, uh, the, the record company thought, oh yeah, these are really hard guys. And <laughs> they didn't know that we even, didn't even have a band at that time. But, <laughs> so uh, when we got the deal, I... Uh, I phoned to the uh, guitar player, the other guitar player of um, uh, Black Jack, Frank Teasing, if he wants to join the band. And uh, he wants to join the band. So I became the singer, bass player. He became the uh, guitar player. And I played the drums. And this is the... And six weeks later, we were in studio. Uh, you can imagine in this six weeks before the signing of the deal, and the uh, uh, studio, we had some really hard work because we only had these four songs, nothing yeah. else. And uh, and in, but m- with most of the um, of the songs, uh, we uh, worked the same as uh, the four on the uh, Bloodsucker demo. So we, uh, I got old blackjack tunes, and uh, we played them two times or three times as fast and uh, uh, made some new, new lyrics on it. And uh, so it, it was not that uh, complicated. And there were two, two or three songs were just written for this album. And the rest was already existing in, in other versions. So um, six weeks later, we were in Southern Germany and recorded the album. Uh, how, how much... Uh... How much studio time did you get for that record? Uh, it was within the mixing uh, two weeks. Two weeks. Yes, the list was. Um, in those times, I thought uh, this was not very much time. But uh, <laughs> now I learned this is this is really, 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 really much time. So um, and in those times, of course, we we, uh, well, we didn't succeed in being rock stars and uh, uh, there were no girls uh, climbing up to us heading for the zip of our trousers or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all these all these things are not happening so uh, we, we thought this was uh, uh, because we are not uh, uh, getting not enough uh, uh, time at, in the studio or not enough uh, uh, power from the record company, not enough advertising or anything, but of, of course it was just as good as it could be uh, within six weeks of existing this band. So uh, I'm really fine with this album and um, we managed to at least get some fans with it and uh, started touring and everything. So it's, it was uh, the, the way into the business, kind of. And uh, so in the end, it was good for us. Yeah. So how soon after did you start working on Sign for the Wicked? 
Sign of the Wicked. Immediately after that, because um, there were some songs uh, we uh, uh, published with the uh, live album uh, last year uh, that was coming out with the uh, new edition of the uh, uh, Sadness Declaration Incorporated. And uh, this was uh, uh, this is a live recording from a gig we did in 1986 uh, in, in a small village in northern Germany, and uh, there was a, a, a song uh, called uh, Metal Hammer, and this song uh, was the uh, was uh, in, in most cases was the was uh, already mega mosh, so. We already had this song, but uh, it will, was shortly after the recordings. I think three or weeks after the recordings, I wrote this song, and we already played it when the when the album came out, and it was very popular from the beginning. So um, the the most of the songs I started working on it just after the uh, the first album uh, was in the stores. Wow. Wow. So uh, you get more time for that record and a better budget? Yes. Well, um, the budget was the same was all, every time, two weeks. Um, <laughs> uh, but we um, we had another studio, a better studio. And uh, with, with some luck, we managed to get the same producer uh, and uh, as... Uh, on the first uh, album, Tom Kruger. So uh, this was very easy from the uh, uh, yeah from the handling, and uh, we were kind of relaxed. We had a good time. We had some success up to this point, and this was a really cool cool thing for us. So uh, everything was smooth, it worked. Just we were in a flow if you want and uh, so uh, this was really really easy recording we had a much time much fun for far more fun than we had later with the mystery album but this is another story yeah yeah and it's an amazing record so for the next record mistreated you guys did change labels uh why was that not really because oh. the, this was this was a, a, a thing from the record company. It was the same record company, Gamma Records, but they uh, differed in, in different labels because uh, they found that we are not really trash. They, because we were singing and not growing and everything, and there were other bands in the uh, uh, in, in the record company like Darkness or something. They were really hard trashers. And uh, we were more speedy, and they wanted to uh, to get this w w w or a whole label from from, from that. But um, and with this, they changed uh, some uh, distribution uh, 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 processes. Worked with another distribution company, and uh, this came out as a big fail. Because the 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 uh, other distribution company, the first distribution company was uh, Ariola uh, Intercord, and they were working internationally, and uh, they brought the the record in every store. Then, but the the new distribution company, they were more into uh, blues, jazz things, and they didn't know the bands, they didn't know the music, they didn't had any idea. Uh, who will buy these records? And uh, so uh, the sellings were really, really, really bad, not only for us, but for every uh, band in the label. And uh, not very much time after that, uh, uh, Gamma cancelled the whole metal thing because there were, then there were the, the 90s, then there was the grunge scene and everything, and metal went down for about six or seven years completely. And uh, you see, the, the best albums of all the bands uh, in, in metal scene, to my mind, were at the end of the 80s, up to 1990. I said, up to the Black Album of Metallica. And after that, there was a, 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 a big break, if you want, uh, to my mind, 
uh, up to the uh, end of the 90s because uh, nobody wants to hear that. And this, this was the reason why we uh, uh, didn't work on that any longer. Uh, uh, most of the others did. Yeah, so it was really just the, how the, the music uh scene changed in the 90s kind of grunge took over and more alt music so is that that's why the band went on hiatus i assume yeah well, because you see it's not only the the uh, the selling of the albums it's uh, also um the upcoming cd at, at the end of the 80s because the the, the first uh, of two the first two albums came out on vinyl and uh, on the the CD uh, was uh, common about a year or two years later, and uh, with the last album it was from the beginning with the CD, and then uh, uh, in Germany we uh, had the the first uh, things with the internet in, in the in the nineties, and all this came together uh, with grunge and with. Uh, this music not being that interesting anymore. It wasn't new anymore. And uh, the, the, the covers of the uh, magazines of, for the young people, uh, there were pop stars on it and, and everything. So heavy metal uh, really, really went down a lot. I don't know how it was in, in America, but here it was. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, uh, most of the bands uh, decided to do something different, as we did. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it really uh it really does suck what happened. Uh, I know. Uh, I I'm just curious. We will get to '80s metal band, which I think is fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. but what was your relationship like with the rest of the German thrash metal bands? The the connection was not really, really close because um, I was constantly working uh, just to to get my, my bills paid. So I didn't hang out that much with other musicians. And you see, Osnabrück is a rather small town. It's about 150,000 people. So, wow. uh, and most of the, the other bands, they were... Uh, uh, in, in Hamburg, Dortmund, Munich, Berlin, somewhere in, in the biggest cities. And so we only met them uh, on uh, concerts. Uh, of course, we had some friends within the scene, but this was not so close uh, like we have been in, uh, well, like it would have been when we were uh, working in, in Hamburg, for instance because in Hamburg there was at least 100 metal bands. And mm. some of them, like uh, Running Wild and Halloween, they became rather big. And so this was a complete different scene from the small town scene in, in my town. But I already worked as a, a, a graphic and uh, the others had families. And so we didn't want to leave here. And I think in the end, it was a good de decision because uh, in those times um, we founded our uh, uh, adult life as you want, uh, not only within, but also without the music. So this is a kind of security thing, if you want. Um, and so uh, for this reason, we never had problems to uh, get our bills paid. And this is uh, a thing not every metal musician uh, can tell you. I know some, at least our, our former uh, guitar player, Rage, they, they had some difficulties with that. Yeah. Yeah. May, it see, makes it's, sense. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, uh, I've, I've talked to the, uh, to the uh, 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 guy from M uh, MDD Records uh, just two or uh, four weeks ago. And uh, he told me that nobody in the whole scene in Germany, in the whole metal scene, every band, and this is includes Halloween and the Running Wild and even except only work from making music. They had to do different things 
because the uh, uh, touring is about two or three months a year and you have to do something uh, in the meantime just uh, to get your ass at the wall and uh, so they are doing uh, different things to get this uh, uh, to get the money to, for their living and so it's me so uh, I've always worked as a graphic and uh, I had different bands uh, uh, playing other music. So uh, in the 90s, I, I began to work with a cover band. I still work with them and we did 60 shows a year. Wow. What band is this? This is, uh, the band is called The Lucky Ones. And it's uh, just a cover band. You lose top 40. Yeah. And uh, this band also exists uh, uh, since uh, 1986. Wow. So they are close and old friends. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it's, but it's a, a lot of fun because uh, you go with the music through the, the uh, different times. And uh, uh, this is a kind of fun. And you, you, uh, it's not the, this metal bubble, you see. Um, I've, I've, I always think of some of the guys I meet on, uh, on festivals that uh, only listening to metal uh, makes it kind of single-minded. To my yeah. view. I agree. Uh, everybody every, everybody uh, has its, its own way to do that, but uh, I think it's sometimes refreshing to just to hear some James Brown tunes or something. <laughs> <laughs> totally, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, it's, it's just, it's not that, uh, that, uh, yeah, that, that hard and that this, uh, you see just smiling faces. It's, it's not that often in metal, <laughs> uh, but from <laughs> time to time I need some smiling faces. So for this yeah. Season, a lot of angry phases in metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, um, and uh, it's always if we are, I have, to, I'm asked to to do a photo. I always do this, you know. Um, okay, your head it's, shoved it's, in the rock. It's fun. It's fun there because the, the, the nice, uh, nice people, fans, and uh, I, I really enjoy this. But uh, in, of course, I. Uh, don't walk through my hometown uh, always like this. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm just kind of normal and le like the other song. Yeah, yeah. So what, what, how did it call you back? Because in 2014, the band was, uh, um, got an another life. Yes, yes, yeah. And then three As years ago, you put out the a record. In the 90s, uh, we break it up, uh, but uh, it's, it, was, it's, it was not the thing that we said uh, we close as the eye forever or something. It was just we, we've been on tour in, uh, in the Czechoslovakia and uh, <laughs> the country doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it was it was in uh, early 1991, and yeah, and we came back, and uh, I call you, yes, I call you, and then and we didn't call. Wow. Okay. So it was just just that easy, and uh, there are uh, some reasons for that. Um, as I told several times, we the with the. Um, beginning of 1988 when the, the sign of the wicked was already out uh, we did a tour and uh, we had some personal difficulties with with Frank with the with the, uh, with the guitar player and so we are looking for some somebody who is uh, fitting better within the uh, this small band you see when you only got three members in the band and uh, you only only have to care about the same person every and every time. Uh, it, it gets some frustration. We were kind of frustrated, so we're looking for another guy. And then we found Rage. 
and Rage was uh, uh, marvelous on stage. He he uh, was the the angriest, the fittest, the, the long hairiest, the everything you want. <laughs> and uh, he was really really great. Uh, so we did the whole sign of the wiki geeks uh, with him, and then uh, when we when it was time to uh, get in the studio to record the uh, the mistreated album, uh, we thought that he would as professional in the studio because not only uh, because he was so good on stage, but also he was uh, a little bit older than we were. And he got some, some uh, other experience from different bands he played in. And, uh, but when we came to the studio, it came out that uh, he wasn't not really well prepared. Hmm. And, um, so after we all, like always, we had two weeks. But after six days, uh, there were only recorded uh, I think the, the drums were made and the, the bass were completely recorded. Uh, but we were all working on the guitars for three days and was only three songs recorded. And so the um, uh, the producer came and said, uh, this won't fit. And uh, we got two possibilities. First possibility, you play the guitar and then we get ready within the time or we stop it now and everybody goes home and uh, we didn't want to go home so we recorded uh, so I recorded the guitar by day recorded the solos with rage by night and huh. after after five six days without sleep only constant working I was so tired and completely done that I fell asleep for about two days and within, <laughs> within these two days the mixing was done and uh, so you can imagine wow. that I was not 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 so proud of the work that came out with this um, the, the last day I, I joined them but most of the work was done and uh, the studio time was running out because the, the next band of the label uh, uh, was booked in the in the studio and um, so this wow. was a bad start, you know, with Rage. And uh, this this uh, is a, a story that uh, was a weight on the band until we uh, split up. Though the live gigs were marvelous, really, really great uh, tours. We, we've been in, in Hungary and in... Uh, Czech and uh, in the whole East in Germany, in uh, Netherlands, uh, Italy, and everywhere, uh, and where we had really, really uh, a great time. Uh, but personal, it was not that close anymore after the recordings. And so um, then was the split, if you want, and uh, we didn't think of it for a long time. And in 90, uh, Ralph Maunert, he, he didn't make music anymore. He, had, he hadn't, uh, he sold his, his drum set. He had nothing to do with it anymore. Uh, and in 19, no, in-, in It was 91, you guys split. 2014, he, uh, uh, he sent a video and, uh, uh, he uh, prepared uh, uh, a video with with uh, some SDI songs. He recorded in a, a rehearsal room. He rented on his own, and uh, it uh, he was really really in good shape. And I thought, okay, this was a cool idea, and so I joined him and we played, and it was a hell of fun. This was really really you can imagine. You didn't do this for nearly 10, no, 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> and you joined together and was, it was like an old shoe. You know, you slip inside and it's, it feels warm and great and everything. And this was, this was really, really amazing. And then was the, of course, the, uh, the question, 
uh, we need a guitar player, uh, shall we ask Rach? And uh, we finally decided to, to contact him, but this wasn't that easy uh, because uh, life wasn't good to him. Uh, he uh, hadn't had a job for several years and uh, uh, he was running his life on on uh, uh, yeah on, on on state money if you want and um, so uh, uh, he wasn't in a good shape but uh, we tried and he was coming back kind of and it uh, we really tried to uh, uh, do something, we recorded some things and um, we knew the studio is not the thing, <laughs> new stuff no but we can do some live shows and we, we, we tried to uh, get some live shows and we did some and, but also in the, in the live shows uh, uh, we had some difficulties because uh, Rach, you may have seen uh, pictures of him from uh, from the uh, from 2014 or later, yeah, and pictures of him from uh, 1989. Uh, uh, so this was a different person. Uh, if life isn't good to you, uh, this uh, you got some signs in your face and on your body and uh, in your wallet. Yeah, and this, and this was uh, the case with rage. Um, so when we when we did some shows with him, uh, and we from the beginning, Ralph said because he was very busy, he works uh, uh, in, a, in a big firm um, uh, as a manager uh, uh, in the food industry. So he said for two years, every single day, every every day off. Uh, my whole uh, vacancies, everything was going to the band. But after two, year, two years, uh, I'm I'm through with it uh, because my job is it has got a really demanding job. So to make it short, and um, so it was clear that after two years we uh, needed a, another drama, and like it was back then in the eighties. Uh, I asked uh, uh, Christoph Ulrich, who is uh, also the drummer of the Lucky Ones, uh, if he wants to join in again, like he did in 1990. So uh, he knew the songs, of course, he knew the band, and he fitted into it re in a really, really short time. And from uh, 1916, we worked with Christoph, but um, the health of Rage was not in that shape that he uh, could do more than 10 or 11 shows a year. And wow. uh, so he wasn't able to do a really tour, with so long tour, but we, of course, we wanted to play. And uh, then there was a, a festival gig in 19, uh, 2017 in, in, uh, in Czech. Um, and he told us that he wants to leave the band. So uh, within some weeks, we found uh, uh, Daniel. And Daniel is the guy who is on the uh, uh, 80s metal band album. And this is the reason was because uh, yeah, Rich wasn't in the shape to, uh, to concentrate that long time and uh, to yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, everything else uh, you should you should ask him uh, if you can find him. Uh, I was turning sixty this this year, and I inv invited him. He didn't show up. Sorry enough, uh, and uh, I know that he's still living, but I don't know, uh, and I know where, but. Uh, uh, he hasn't got telephone. He hasn't got uh, a computer. He has got wow. Computer. He's completely just off the grid. Not not accessible. Yeah. <laughs>
Wow, that's that that's that's a lot to to learn. Wow, I had no clue. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the the eighties, uh, the 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 newest record which came out three years ago, I think, is still amazing. Um, still a really good record. Um, you were also talking about that's so crazy. Um, I, I had no idea that's that's uh how he was doing. Um, what was it like? playing with him for the first time uh after you know 25 years like what was that like being on stage again yeah this um the, on stage it was great because uh he uh he put all the 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 power he got within this performance and uh uh on on stage it worked uh pretty good but um, it was clear from the beginning because we, we tried to uh, record uh, something that that, uh, that the the exact playing you can hear on on the recordings uh, is not the uh, working uh, anymore. Um, this had has something to do with how the way you hold your plaque, how to concentrate, uh, uh, how to get the speed. Of course, the speed metal, and the, the uh, most of the guitar tunes are uh, rather quick. So uh, you have to be in a good shape, and uh, everything, not only the fingers, but your brain, your everything has to be in a good shape. So that that you are uh, can do really good performances, and it was clear that he uh, it was really really exhausting for him. Uh, just to give an example, we were in um, uh, we were invited to some festivals in, in Japan. Uh, we flew over there, and the first thing uh, uh, was happened to him. We, he was. Uh, he get lost on the uh, airport in Amsterdam. Oh no! Uh, and this is a really, really big airport. And we tried to find him, and uh, the uh, the plane was already uh, uh, called on the on the uh, wire systems there. And uh, just two minutes before they closed the door, we found him and finally get into the uh, the plane and rushed over to Japan. Wow! And uh, and when we came there, the first thing who came here, came to his mind was to argue with some of the uh, policemen standing there. So, and this was constantly going on. You see, this was like a child you have to care. Yeah. And uh, this is, was really, really exhausting. So, um, as a friend, I, I was sorry that he couldn't uh, go on anymore and at 2017 but uh, it was clear that this could go on then yeah uh, yeah and so and, and then when we found daniel uh, you see all the the, the uh, hard things and the difficulties were gone by you know yeah this was just everything was working this was a complete normal guy with his personal hygiene and getting his stuff together, <laughs> these things. And it was really, really, uh, and, and I'm not making this up, it was really, really uh, uh, hard times sometimes. And, and so um, when we played with Daniel, it was really, really easy then. And yeah. we had more fun. And we did some more shows and uh, played in, in Spain, uh, a tour and everything. And uh, but it was uh, with with Daniel was the problem because he's he's got a family and he's he built a home uh, and uh, the most of the money came from the bank. So uh, uh, <laughs> it wasn't for him not a good idea to become a professional musician. Uh, and uh, so uh, it was clear that he, he can't do this for a very long time. But luckily, we found uh, Chris Friedel, who's playing now for three years in the band. Uh, he's very young, 
not not even half as young as I am. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, but he is the best guitar player we ever had. And uh, so this is the, the story of a drummer and me and different guitar players within this band. Wow. Wow. Um, now, now that is the story, but what's how, how does it continue? What's the future of uh, the band look like? We recorded an album, a completely new album. Wow. It, uh, the recordings are already done, but we've got some uh, problems <laughs> uh, with the, uh, uh, how are we going on with the, with the record company and uh, because the... What label? I think it, it's, it's, it's a really, a really big thing. It's not only a, a metal album. Uh, but uh, it's it's um, also a play. It's also uh, if you if you want a, a, a metal opera, with uh, with and it, the goal is to get this whole thing on stage as a play in the future. Somehow. That's awesome, and it's a really really big thing. And it's uh, and I want to do it right. And uh, of course, the, the first thing is that we have, uh, uh, have to get this uh, 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 in a very professional way. And uh, the, uh, the record company uh, is not convinced. <laughs> it's, it's a money thing, of course. Yeah. And, uh, we, uh, we are looking for... Uh, for partners to to get a, a good mixing and then uh, of course uh, there were there will be two versions uh, a, a band version uh, of the of the songs and there was uh, will be a, a play version with uh, with different uh, voices from the uh, person uh, in the play. Uh, wow, got, that's awesome. Uh, Female ver uh, voices, younger voices, and older voices, and everything. And uh, this is what we are trying to do in the next year. Uh, besides playing some festivals, we are in Wacken next year. Very we awesome. Are in Wacken, yes. <laughs> Congrats! Um, very, very, very cool. Managed, managed to to play there, <laughs> but uh, and I'm I'm really really proud of that because this was one of the dreams that Ralf and I had when we uh, formed the band in 2014, uh, uh, the second time. Uh, and if we managed to play in Wacken, uh, our job is done, you know. Yeah, <laughs> Because yeah, Wacken yeah. is really, really a big thing here in, in Europe. And uh, because it's the, the by far the biggest festival. Oh yeah, uh, huge. It's really, really huge, uh, more than uh, 80,000 people, and it's a really, really big thing. Uh, and I've been there, uh, of course, in the audience <laughs> uh, two times, and uh, it's, it's really of a, a good place to be. Uh, uh, good people, totally. good music, a really, really uh, 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 good thing. So um, this is our plans for the next year. Uh, and I hope we will manage to get the uh, to get some good partners for the uh, for the mixing and the distribution of the new album and uh, with the recordings of the uh, of the other voices. The, the plan is to get the uh, or to use the uh, the playback that we as a band uh, recorded and the different voices. So do you got the same music? but different voices with different mixings. Um, wow. Uh, this is this is the plan, the goal for the next year. Uh, so SDI will go on. SDI will live on. Uh, it will, and is, is it going to be like speed metal? Like a speed metal concept? Oh, yeah, it, it, it will be, uh, it will be a bit harder than the uh, 80s metal band album. Because wow. in the metal best band album, there were some songs um, I uh, I wrote within the 
or most of the songs I wrote were within the, the 20 or nearly 30 years uh, between the split up and the recording in uh, 2020. So um, this was a, a, a wide range of songs. Uh, <laughs> very colorful. <laughs> and, I'm uh, very exciting. Yeah, and it's uh, uh, so... Um, uh, this time, of course, it was different because all the songs were uh, were written for this uh, uh, occasion and for this album, and uh, and of course, it's a play, so the uh, the lyrics is, uh, are uh, one story, and like linear, uh, yeah, on, yeah. Of course, a play, different uh, views. On the same uh, thing uh, from a different person and, and everything so it's not only uh, uh, an album with with the same topic like such a club was such a club lonely hearts club band or something and not not uh, this kind of album but it's it's uh, a, a very straight and uh, a continuing story and uh, so uh, I'm very, very uh, excited about that. Very, very exciting, man. That's a uh, that's really awesome news. I'm really looking forward to that release. Uh, that sounds so interesting. Um, so as we wrap up here, what's the best way for people to just stay updated with everything you're doing? Of course, we've got a, a Facebook channel, and uh, and we are we've got a, a website, SCI minus metal.com um, all the news up uh, displayed there um, and of course we uh, you can reach us at any time through the uh, through our Facebook account and to our uh, YouTube account and so all the messages that uh, uh, were displayed there and all the questions will come that they will be answered so um, this is the easiest way to stay tuned to, to the band and uh, to, for instance, look where I play next. We've got uh, uh, three uh, dates for the, for the next year. Of course, Wacken, as I told you, and then a big festival. In, Very in exciting. Spain, and, and we are playing in uh, Brno. And there will be some gigs, of course, in the next year. And hopefully then a, a tour in bigger tour in 2025 when's the last time but, you guys have been to the u.s we tried to do to uh, come over that uh, several times but the, the problem is uh if you are not invited uh to <laughs> occasions uh then you got the problem to uh to, to get the, the tour done without knowing the country and the places you can play and everything so you need somebody who does that for you and you have to pay him or her. And um, for this reason, it, uh, it's, it's not so easy to organize uh, that. And uh, in the end, it should be at least um, uh, the money you put in should come out. So um, I'm not sure that we can gain enough audience uh, if we do a tour for, with, for instance, 20 gigs throughout the country. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, we will see. Uh, and my dream is a, a tour not only uh, in your country, but also in South America, because we, we got uh, a, a lot of uh, fan mail from there. Um, and I think in South America also, they are very... Uh, interested in metal and uh, but in South America you got the security problem and uh, some of my of, uh, of the bands who've already been there uh, had some difficulties and you have to think over that very carefully unfortunately uh, yeah yeah especially in Brazil and in Mexico uh, the, there are things happening on the road that are not uh, not so easy to match so um so the uh, you have to think of that but we 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 will try to be there 
uh, maybe in 2025, we, because as I told you, we are planning to do a bigger tour then. And uh, finally, we have to go to America in the in one or the other way. <laughs> well, uh, we're all waiting. We would love to uh, see you guys. Um, if not, the whack and performance is going to be amazing. Uh, 80s metal band is streaming everywhere. Um, thank you so much for doing this, man. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. I'm Brandon Baddock, and this is Disturbing the Priest. Mm -hmm.